Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with another edition of On the Rocks. And today we are joined by two-time Olympian, Mark Kennedy, who is in the curling bubble. He's the alternate player for Team Canada at the World Men's Curling Championship. Mark, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good, Ted. Thanks for having me. Nice to, nice to catch up. Yeah, it's great to see you again as well. And, uh, you know, you're in a different kind of role this year, obviously, playing as the alternate player in, uh, with the Team Botcher. And obviously you were brought on because Darren Molding the third was uh, struggling with some back spasms uh, after the mixed doubles Canadian championship and wasn't a hundred percent sure at that time, whether he was going to be able to play in the, as well as he would like to be able to. And to everybody's great relief, he is uh, doing well and uh, his back is okay, but you're there just as that sort of backup. And uh, what's the experience been like? Yeah, you know what, Ted, it's been great. Um, you know, as you mentioned, thankfully he was healthy. You know, my uh, my preference was to not play, uh, was to was for Darren to be healthy, and because it's it's a great team, and and so far that's been the case. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. You know what, I, I I've I've been so lucky over the years to have some great fifth men and and great support team. Um, you know, whether it was Scott Pfeiffer or Rick Lang or Lee Toner or Adam Enright or Jules Ochar. I, always had these great people behind the scenes that did so much work for our teams and helped us win. Um, and, you know, it, it, it could be a bit of a thankless position for those people. Um, so I was, but I knew how important they were. So I was, I was happy that I could be a part of this and support the team from behind the scenes and do some rock matching and, uh, you know, use a little bit of my experience wearing a maple leaf to, to help these boys out a bit. Um, so I really embraced it and, and enjoyed every minute of it. And, you know, the boys are grinding hard and, you know, they've certainly made me feel like part of the team for this week and um, they've got a tough task ahead of them. But, um, you know, they'll, I, I know they'll come through today and, and uh, yeah, just happy to be a part of it. Well, I know you're still playing uh, with your regular team, the Brad Jacobs team out of Ontario, but uh, here you're maybe playing a, a little bit more of a coaching role. Is that something that's in your future, Mark? You know, I, I think so. I, I would love to do it. Um, I, I think, you know, as you get a little bit older and, and the, the experience I've had and the great players I've played with, I would love to give that back. And, and whether it's to our Canadian men's champions or junior champions or, or women's teams or, or even just my daughters, you know, it's, uh, I'd love to be able to pass on some of that experience and knowledge I've learned over the years. So I'd love to, to fit into that type of when I'm eventually done throwing stones. <laughs> well, sounds good. Um, so it's interesting watching this World Men's Curling Championship. The thing that comes to mind to me the most is just how good the international field is. And as we do this video, Team Canada is sitting at seven and four. They're coming off of a couple of tough, really tough losses on Wednesday. Still got a good chance to get into the playoffs, but there's no slam dunks anymore at this level. And you found that out at the Olympics, unfortunately, in 2018, when you, you guys just missed the podium when you were with team Kevin Cooey. It's yeah. clear that the world is really catching up, isn't it? Yeah. The quality of play has definitely improved. You know, it's very, very good. Um, and it's just, it's just tough. You know, I remember talking to you specifically in Korea after some of those tough losses and just looking at you and saying like, this got really hard to play these international teams. And, you know, from an outside perspective, the one thing I noticed is, when we were at the Olympics in Vancouver in 2010, you know, Canada still carried a bit of an intimidation factor. You know, there was always going to be the tough teams that, you know, Norway, Scotland, Sweden. Um, but, you know, I refer to them as the other teams. I don't think they ever felt like they could beat Canada at that time. You know, you carried this maple leaf and it was just a matter of time before you beat those teams. So, so that always meant that you were in the mix at the end of the week, you were eight and three or nine and two, um, and then, you know, make the medal round and, and you might lose a tough game to a Scotland or Sweden or Switzerland. But back then you weren't going to lose very often to the, to the Asian countries and some of the lesser known European teams. It's not like that anymore. You know, if anything, it's the opposite. They, they see the Maple Leaf and they raise their game and they feel like they can beat you and they come out and they play fantastic. Um, so there's a, there's a difference there and you can sense it. And you know that now as Team Canada, you have to go out there and have your best game in order to win. And if you struggle a little bit, these teams are going to take advantage of it and, and put you in some tough positions. So 
I think it's important, you know, going forward for Canada to, to adapt and, um, you know, learn more about these international teams, learn more about what they're doing and, and try to get some of that intimidation back um, as we move forward here. But, but understanding that uh, it, it's never going to be the same and these international events are going to be a challenge going forward for Canada. Yeah, and we've really seen even the growth of the Russian Federation team here, the Sergei Glukov team, they've been playing fantastic and they're now in that mix with, I think there's a, probably you'd say maybe eight teams that really are medal contenders in this thing, even up till today, that's the yeah. case. And certainly at the beginning of the week, and um, that is different from what it used to be like. And, you know, it's interesting because Brendan Botcher and his team have never had the chance to be here before. So do you think that they're just finding that out or do you think it was possible for you and other people who have experienced to, to really let them know that that was going to be the case? Uh, it's a good question. You know, I think they knew. I think most of your top Canadian men's and women's curlers now know that the international events are going to be really difficult. So I don't think that this was a surprise. Um, but I think it's been good for them to go through this experience uh, you know, because it is a lot of adversity and it's a lot different when the whole country is behind you or not behind you <laughs> if things aren't going well. And that's a different experience and something that we felt in Korea as well. You know, things are great if everything's going good. Um, but, you know, getting to experience what it's like when things are a bit of a struggle is tough and it's a whole different level of pressure. Um, but for their curling careers and their development as young athletes, I think it's important to go through this and really grind through that adversity. And I have no doubt that they're going to. Um, but, you know, there, there might be a little bit of an eye opening for them. Not that they ever doubted that these teams were great. But, you know, to your point, you got eight teams in the mix right now. And, and it's eight teams that are, you know, they've come a long way with strategy and, and, and their curling mechanics and the way they throw the rock and, and no fear. You watch that Russian team and there is no fear in any shot. They feel like they can make them all. Um, so it's a really interesting dynamic. And, and, you know, but this is a great team, this Botcher team. And they've gone through a lot of adversity in the last few years with some tough Briar finals. So they have been groomed for tough situations. Um, and I have no doubt they're going to come out in these next two games and play great and um, you know, get into that medal round. Just touching on something that you were talking about there, did you and your teammates on Team Cooey and the Rachel Holman team feel some negativity coming from across the pond when you were, you know, not on the podium at that Olympics? Uh, once it was over, yeah, definitely. You know, it, it was a good experience for me to see the, the wrath of Twitter and social media, right? The keyboard warriors that aren't afraid to say something they would never say to your face. Right. Um, you know, and I think we need to be open and honest about that as, as Canadian athletes in a sport that we've dominated for a long time, that, that negativity just comes with wearing that maple leaf sometimes. Um, but teaching our young athletes that at the end of the day, it's just noise, you know, and, and it, it's, it's a choice whether you allow it to affect you or not. And, you know, I, I growing up with social media in, in my curling career, I've had to learn how to adapt to that and adjust to it and, and, you know, only let the stuff in that really matters to me. And that's from the people that, that love and support me. Um, so, and every athlete's a little bit different and, and I'm sure these boys will experience a little bit of that or, and already have, um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it can be tough, but it all depends on how you deal and manage with it. So just one last thing I wanted to ask you about. Uh, the last stone draw competition in the world really holds a lot of significance because there are no tiebreaker games. The cumulative scores from the LSDs are what are used to break ties. Just how important is that aspect of the game? And it's really something that fans on TV never see. It happens behind the scenes. But there's a lot of attention paid to that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is. And there has been for a long time. Um, and like you said, with no tiebreakers, it's extremely important. Uh, and it's a skill. It's a skill to in, in nine minutes to get your sheet entirely warmed up so that guys can throw a draw and, and sweep it close to the button. So some of those pregame practices can get pretty intense. 
And, uh, you know, guys are really trying to win that hammer and, and have an important last stone draw towards the end of the week. So it's something that gets a lot of discussion amongst the athletes on how to improve your practice and, you know, how do we make sure that we're close to the button all the time? Um, yeah, it has a huge amount of significance, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot better than, than flipping the coin for hammer like we used to do. <laughs> you know, it, it's good that it's a skill uh, and something you have to focus on. And, and not to mention just having the hammer in the first end itself can be a huge advantage at this level of play. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting. The, the challenge for us, though, is that it's often different at the national, at the Briar or the Scotties compared to the international events. So over the years, we've had to adjust. You know, you do it one way for the Briar and then you go to the Worlds and you have to completely change it. So it's nice this year that it's the same. It was the same at the Briar as it is at the Worlds and assuming it'll be the same at the Olympics. So it really becomes a skill that you can work and improve and, and do better um, as you go along. Mark, I really appreciate you joining me today on On the Rocks. Uh, all the best to you at, in the curling bubble and to Team Canada the rest of the way here. For Mark Kennedy, I'm Ted Wyman. You've been watching On the Rocks.